I'm Brian Gumbel of HBO's Real Sports. With the story of how and why baseball is still an all-boys game in an era when girls and women are being afforded more athletic options than ever before. Let's go, you got Come this. On, it's perhaps the rarest of all sights in American sport. Virtually never seen at any athletic field or any school, at any level, in any place in America. A girls' baseball team. Look closely. This is what one looks like. We are badass. We are badass. I'm telling you that. We are really good. It just takes people to open their eyes and to say that we can play. 15-year-old Maddie Sabin is the team's shortstop. She and her teammates, school-age girls from all over the East Coast, travel from town to town, state to state, playing the only competition they can find. Boys. You go, girls. What do you think is going through their minds? I think some of them were like, we got this. Come on, this is girls. Come on now. And then I think some of them were like, wait, what a minute. What if they're good? Like, what if they're good? Can you compete with the boys? Team? Absolutely, we can. Absolutely. All day long. Josh Devinney is the coach of the all girls team. If we get a third place plaque at a tournament, nine times out of ten, it's in the trash can before we get to our car. Thrown away. Thrown away. If we don't get to the championship game, we, it's almost like it was a failure. What is it you're trying to prove? We can play the game. We're not there for like, for a joke, we're there to play, seriously. The girls say they'd be happy to play in a league with other girls. Problem is, there hasn't been a league like that, a baseball league for girls or women, anywhere in America in a very long time. These feminine phenoms play in the All-American Girls Baseball League. It was the 1940s when America's men went off to fight the Second World War. And its women were asked to keep the national pastime going while they were gone. Years later, the league inspired a Hollywood movie, a league of their own. A heartwarming comedy to most, but for some, a source of inspiration. How familiar with the movie are you? I know the words. <laughs> How many times have you watched it? Probably more than like 50 times. Are you crying? Are you crying? There's no crying. There's no crying in baseball. Why don't you leave her There's no crying in baseball. It's the movie's most famous line. But while it was played for laughs, the subtext was clear. Baseball is a man's game. And indeed, not long after the war ended, so did organized baseball for women. There's no crying in baseball. There's also no girls in baseball. Yeah. Does that piss you off? It does. At a time when most gender lines are being stripped away across U.S. society, particularly in sports, with schools offering girls teams in everything from rugby to hockey to wrestling, not one school, not one at any level, has a single baseball team for girls. It's something few have given much thought to. Why aren't there baseball teams for girls? Even fewer know the answer. It's largely the result of a fateful decision made nearly 50 years ago, a decision that has survived decades of social progress to keep the game of baseball a sport just for boys. It all began in 1972, when an 11-year-old girl from Hoboken, New Jersey, decided she wanted to play Little League Baseball. Her name was Maria Pepe. Why do you like sports so well? Most girls don't. I don't know. It keeps you active. You know, sit around, sewing, something like that. It gets boring after a while. I was good, my friends would tell you. I still know them today. They still call me Peppy. <laughs> so how many games did you play? I played three games. Just three? Three. That was three games too many for an opposing coach, who cited Little League's boys-only rule and demanded that Maria be kicked off the team. Pepe still remembers her coach breaking the news. He said, we'll have to give your uniform to another kid because I'll have to get another kid to replace you, but you could keep your cap, and I want you to know you can come up and keep score. I did that for one game, and that was it. I couldn't do it again. Why? Because I wanted to be out on the field. Uh, you know, I had somebody else running around. He had my uniform. I just couldn't watch it. And there's something about 
uh, being taken out of a game that you really love, uh, it's hard to explain. We are now nearly 50 years removed from this. Yes. And it still hurts this much. Well, you know, it does. And what hurts is that the only reason they could tell you it was because you were a girl. A girl. It hurts. It still, still hurts. Peppy's story caught the attention of the National Organization for Women, which filed suit on her behalf. Little League Baseball fought back, claiming that its boys-only rule was there to protect girls from the dangers of the game. Little League's president, Creighton J. Hale, who also happened to be a doctor, testified that dental injuries could harm a girl's looks and compromise her future prospects, and that getting hit by a ball in the chest could damage female breast tissue and lead to breast cancer. The debate spilled into communities around the state, where town hall meetings grew emotional about the need to protect the fairer sex. I don't want my 10-year-old girl sliding into second base and having your 12-year-old boy tagging her on the breast. I don't want my 10-year-old girl rounding third base or second base and having your 12-year-old boy tagging her on the rump. If a person is playing shortstop and a ball takes a bad hop, yes. hits that person in the nose, and it can happen, I've seen yes. it happen. I Break the nose, knock the teeth out. Yes. Who would you rather have it happen to, your daughter or your son? Your Either daughter. one, because they are equal human beings, they are people. I was not afraid of getting hit with the ball. I didn't feel my bones were weaker than the boy next to me. And so it was all like a bunch of hogwash to me. Little League went to extraordinary lengths to maintain the status quo, fighting the case for two years. Some Little League chapters in New Jersey even shut down altogether rather than face the prospect of including girls. For two years, Maria Pepe says she prayed every night and each night asked the same question used to say, Lord, why am I physically as good as this boy next to me, but I'm not able to do what he's doing? In the end, the courts decided that girls had the right to play, and Little League accepted defeat, or so it seemed. Little League Baseball said today that it will, quote, defer to the changing social climate and permit girls to play on boys' teams. But that same year, Little League also decided to do something else. Do you remember what else they did? They started softball. Yes, for the first time ever, the Lords of Little League began to organize softball leagues. Critics say so they could funnel girls into that sport and away from baseball. So while the girls were allowed to play baseball, they were encouraged to play softball. That was their answer to the problem. Absolutely. They played slow pitch and they gave them visors and shorts. And that was now the game that girls played. By the time Justine Siegel was growing up in the 1980s, it was widely understood. Girls like her were supposed to play softball. But Siegel, like Maria Pepe before her, wanted to play baseball with the boys. She did, and began a life in the game, eventually forming the first ever all-girls team to play in a national boys tournament, and later becoming a coach of a men's minor league team. The more I was told to quit playing baseball, the more I was going to stay. Why do I have to quit what I love just because of my gender? There are going to be people who watch this and they're gonna say, who cares? They've got softball, and they got tons of other sports to choose from. Why do girls need to play baseball? Why do boys need to play baseball? Because it's the greatest game on earth. Softball is an exciting game, but it's not baseball. To many girls and women, this is the real thing. A sport steeped in history, rich in folklore, beloved by generations of Americans. Softball, they say, is a weak knockoff, a sport played with too big a ball and too small a field, a field that even at the college level is the same size as the one used by nine-year-old Little League boys. How many times did you hear from different people along the way, Maddie, why aren't you playing softball? All the time. And what do you say? I'm like, I don't like softball. It's like watching paint dry. Yet even girls like Maddie and her teammates, girls who excel in baseball, are expected and often pressured to change sports. Show of hands, how many of you have been told you should switch to softball? More than once? Yeah. 
Yeah. More than twice? Yeah. And what's your response? What do you say? If I can still compete and sh still play, then why can't I still play? That's like telling team. someone whose life is basketball, oh, you can't play basketball anymore. Like, it's hard. You can't tell somebody to stop doing something they love. So the girls play to prove that they belong and to bury the notion that they can't handle the demands of the game. Do you think that most baseball fans would come to a field, a regulation field, and be surprised that a girl can make some of the exact same plays, that the girl yeah. can make the throw from third mm -hmm. to first? I think they'd be shocked. Come on, guys, let's swing that stick, let's go. We watched the girls play a tournament in Florida where they went undefeated and made it to the finals go, 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 go. before ending up in second place. Not bad for a bunch of girls. Did you see a moment today where they, all of a sudden, their eyes opened up and they said, oh, these aren't just girls. These are girls who can play baseball. Yeah, I did, actually. When was that? Nice spectacular catch from shortstop. Catch that. Yeah. 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 Well, Usually when you see girls on a baseball field, there's always that sense of doubt that they're going to do well. And I think, I think we all showed them up. <laughs> There is a place where girls playing baseball and doing it well isn't noteworthy. It's normal. But that place is far from here. It's it. The nation of Japan famously imported baseball from the United States many years ago, but did not import the game's boys-only bias. High schools across the country have teams like this one, coached by Megumi Kita. How often do they practice? Oh, six days per week. Six days a week? Yes. How many hours a day? A weekday, about four hours. Then weekend, uh, sometimes eight hours. Eight hours a day yes. on the weekends? Weekend. Across Japan, some 30,000 girls play the game with all of the determination of the boys. We visited a baseball facility in the city of Osaka where we saw hundreds of girls playing baseball, middle school girls, high school girls, and college women, working on their skills from morning to night, over and over and over again, with no margin for error. One mistake, and the whole team had to run. And the very best will get an opportunity to play the game for a living. Yes, Japanese women have a league of their own, a professional baseball league for women. The games are on TV. The players are paid based on performance, and the best even have endorsements. The league was started by Japanese businessman Kenichi Kakutani, who decided Japanese girls should have the same opportunity to become pro ball players as Japanese boys. Did people think that you were out of your mind to create a women's professional baseball league? I think they probably did. You spent about $30 million to field a women's professional baseball league? Yeah, maybe even more, actually. So why continue to do this? Why is it so important if you're losing money? If I stop now, the girls that had this dream of playing pro baseball, that dream will be gone. I feel like I have to keep going. It's about our love for the game. And Back home, Justine Siegel, the lifelong baseball player and coach, is hoping that one day America will catch up and is trying to do her part. Do you think you'd like to be a coach one day? No, I just want to play baseball. You just want to play, I get it. She started a group called Baseball for All and organizes tournaments like this, planting seeds at the grassroots level by telling the nation's girls that there's no reason they can't be part of the national pastime. At one recent tournament, she was joined by a guest of honor. Hi. Oh, no, thank you. I appreciate that. It's very heartwarming. Maria Pepe at a certain historic ball field in Hoboken, New Jersey, the scene of an old battle that's still being fought today. Hope it brings you luck. This is the field that Maria played on. This is the field where she was denied and told she can't play baseball anymore. But this is now the field where you are playing. What's insane is that Maria Pepe was told she couldn't play baseball. 
I'm 44. I was told I couldn't play baseball. And here in 2019, girls are still being told they can't play baseball. And I think it's enough. It's time to make that change. Thanks for watching. Remember, you can catch the rest of the latest edition of Real Sports all month long on HBO.